Hello there, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we've got a video, an unboxing slash review slash CO2 setup type video. Just put that out there. This is the first thing that I'm going to talk about. There's a hang on back filter. It's from All Pond Solutions, as you can see up here. Unlike some other people, all Pond Solutions are not my favourite company in the world, but it has to be said that some of the stuff is good and it is cheap. So this is your standard hang on back filter, so let's have a look. That's a bit of random tape. So first thing you get, set of instructions. Handy. Uh, there's obviously three models in this line. There's the 400, 500 and 600 liter per hour versions. This is the 600 liter per hour version. Let's pull it out and have a look. This is it, it's what you would expect. Um, I don't know how many ways there is to review a hang on back filter, but let's run through it quickly anyway. It has a lid, good for condensation and things like that, but not good if you want to pop some plants in there to help with your nitrate control. Um, this is your down tube, it fits onto a little strainer like this, which fits onto here, and um, well there's a section that goes in between that actually, it goes onto here, that wasn't meant to happen, let's try that again. So, your pump is here. This is one of the reasons I like this one uh, and I want, wanted to buy it because the pump is external and it's effectively replaceable. You can just twist that off and it will pop right out. And you can put another one on when it inevitably dies, as all things from All Pond Solution tend to do. They don't, not that bad. So, this is the intake down tube. So, you pop it on the first section, which is a surface skimmer so this bit just slides up and down adjusts automatically to your water level which is fine and then this bit on the bottom fairly snug fit to everything feels fairly solid so I'm quite happy with that I will be putting a sponge on this one and we'll talk about that in a minute the other feature here is there's a gate valve on the top which controls the rate of flow um, I'm not entirely sure why you would want to do that, but I suppose you could turn it down when you need to. Two sponges already fitted, don't want them. And the main reason I bought it is look in there, look at the size of this part, the capacity in here for filtration. Well, that was half the reason I wanted to buy it, the other half was I want to replace the air driven sponge filters in my planted tank. Um, the thinking there is because I'm putting CO2 in there, I don't want the air bubbles created by the filtration to pick up that CO2 and take it straight back out again. So if you run air, whether it's an air stone, uh, air driven filter in a planted tank that you're using CO2, it'll still work, it's just not the most efficient way to do that. So this is the reason that I bought this. Other little features on here is obviously this bit hangs on the back of your aquarium or on the side or whatever it might be. You have what they're calling, I think they call them stabilisation feet. But the little twisty bits here, which hang it onto the side of your aquarium, makes it secure and stops it banging and tapping and rattling when it's in use. So and obviously it comes with this lid part, so you can put that on top if you want to. And jobs are good in. Now the reason that I dramatically threw away those sponges is I don't want to waste space in here with sponges, necessarily. So whether you call it pimping your filter or upgrading your filter or whatever it might be, the way you should filter your aquarium in 99% of cases is you want to look at mechanical filtration first, then biological, then chemical. So the other thing that we didn't mention, which is in the box, is two of these cartridges which are 
filter floss with carbon, yeah, carbon in between, which fit into these little trays. So if you were to use the sponge, what you would effectively be doing would be sucking in your water from the intake here up into here, hitting the sponge, hitting the carbon and going out. So in their suggested setup, they are treating this as mechanical filtration, which is the sponge, and it does do a, an element of biological filtration. And then chemical, because you always go mechanical, biological, chemical. So the water comes in, goes through the mechanical, which is the sponge, and in this case acting as biological as well, then chemical, then back out into your tank. What I want to do, and I'll probably try and repurpose this sponge, is do the mechanical down here. What I'm going to do is take a sharp knife, make a slit about an inch, that's where you can see it, make a slit about an inch long here, and then it should just puncture through. I'm going to go in about the length of the blade itself. You don't have to cut a circle or anything like that, but it makes a space you can quite easily fit your finger in. And all we do is we take the end that has all these grooves cut in it and poke it down until the grooves are covered by the sponge and pull it back up again. Done. One filter intake pimped. And then this can just be rinsed out at every water change if need be. This is doing your mechanical filtration. Then the very next thing it's going to do in there is the biological filtration. So I can fill that with whatever kind of biological media I want. I'll probably go with Biohome. Uh, and then it can go through the chemical filtration. I'm not a fan of carbon unless it's needed for a specific purpose. So they're going to stay in the bag and not be used. And I'll use all that extra space for biological media. That is the All Pond Solution 600HO. Um, they call it a, a hang-on filter. I think in the States they're called hang-on back filters. This is only my second or third ever hang-on back. I'm more a fan of the uh, sponge filters and canister filters and sumps and things like that. But this looks pretty well made. The people that I've seen doing reviews of them so far have been happy with it. It was first and foremost the size and the capacity in here that I knew I could retrofit it and stuff it full of biohome or some other kind of biological media. But believe it or not, this thing costs £12.50. So on Amazon right now, check the link in the description. It will be an affiliate link. I might get half a penny every time someone buys one. But £12.50, £12.50, that's ridiculously cheap. Um, other comparable ones for this sort of size and capacity, they are £50, £60, pounds, easy, all day long. And it's such a simple design that there's only so many things that can go wrong. Now, I wouldn't trust this as far as I could throw it, if that makes sense. So if I drop this, I'm fully expecting it to shatter into a thousand pieces. But as long as I'm pretty careful with it, I'm pretty sure this will work just fine. The second upgrade I've got for the whole planted system and CO2 is one of these. Now, this is a replacement for the diffuser. Um, so I bought a new diffuser. It's not a complaint as such from the JBL diffuser that was supplied with the kit. Um, it was just, this was cheap as chips. So you can see there that it's practically identical to the original JBL one that came with the, the kit, but for this spiralling bit in here. Now, I'm not entirely convinced whether this is just a gimmick or whether it does actually work, but the idea here is that your CO2 is coming down this pipe here, and then the old version would come out and be dissipated through the bit of ceramic media there and dissipate through your tank. This is meant to give the CO2 a bit of extra contact time with the water, because that's how your CO2 gets into the tank, is through contact with the, your aquarium water, so I don't want any bubble filters grabbing the CO2 and taking it out. Uh, I want it to stay in as long as possible and if I can keep it in here a little bit longer, in theory, it should add a little bit more contact time and give me something a bit better. But in practice, it's probably just a bit of a gimmick, but it looks cool, so that'll do.
final bit of the puzzle, which has eventually come. Um, it came from China because I didn't realise it was ordering from China. But anyway, uh, I bought a couple of these, which are solenoid valves for the CO2. This just basically lets you put a timer on your CO2 usage so you don't have to remember on your failing brain like me to switch the CO2 on and off. So you just basically cut your CO2 line, put this in between and then an electrical signal gets sent to this one when it comes on to allow a gate valve in there to open up and the CO2 passes and then when the timer shuts off, shuts that valve and the CO2 is stopped. Just what you want. So I'm going to set that to come on an hour before my lights come on and go off an hour after the lights go out. So shall we go down and have a look at these things in use. So there we have it, that's pretty much it. That's it installed on the tank. Um, if you take a look down below, you can see that I have taken off the surface skimmer because I don't know if you're picking it up on the video, but I've got a bit of a, a duckweed problem. So I don't want all that coming in and clogging up my pump. So we've just got the straight down tube and the sponge that you saw me putting on earlier. Um, it's not filled with anything at the moment, but there's the little gate valve we talked about. If you turn that, flow goes right down. All right, back up again. And it's silent. It's great. You could have this in a, a room that you wanted to keep quiet. No problem at all. A little bit earlier, I weighed out some biohome, did a test fit. It takes just under a kilo, just about a kilo probably for try to stack it a little bit neater. So I've got that down here. I'm just going to put that in and let it run. Okay, that's it all up and running. We've got the new hanging back filter there filled with biohome media. Like I said, there's not that much in terms of livestock in here, but I might add to it in the future. And um, that's chucking water in that way and s sending some movement this side. And then over here, we've got the new CO2 kit with its um, solenoid valve, so I don't need to touch that anymore. And that's got a wave maker on here, which is kicking stuff that way. So we're getting some good circulation. The bubbles from the diffuser are hitting the wave maker and getting dispersed throughout the tank as much as possible. I've still got the bubble filters in here, and um, they'll come out shortly. Okay, that's about it for this filter. Hope you enjoyed that review. If you want to learn any more about it, there's another fishy YouTuber called Hobbyist Fishkeeper. He did a review of the same filter uh, a little bit before me, so you get in there first. Um, go and check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but for £12, you cannot really go wrong for this thing. Hope it was of some use to you. If it is, please give us a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. If you want to, give me a subscribe and let me know um, in the comments if you want to know anything else. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye! There's the 400, 500, and 600 blue that I want to replace the air. air All Pond Solution. Something. What's it called? Because that's how you see it too. Okay. You're on the same filter about a. What? Right, shut the door and go away.